Boeing just launched its Starliner spacecraft with human passengers for the first time. The spacecraft is designed to take people and cargo to and from low Earth orbit, including trips to the International Space Station. However, Boeing's not alone in that goal. It's got some competition from SpaceX with its Crew Dragon capsule. Here's everything you need to know about the launch of Boeing's reusable space pod, how it compares to the one made by SpaceX, and why it matters. NASA initially contracted with both Boeing and SpaceX to create what's basically two slightly different versions of the same concept. When the contract was finalized in 2014, SpaceX had never even launched a crewed flight before. Boeing, on the other hand, has been the prime contractor for the ISS since the 90s. While Boeing may have seemed miles ahead of the young SpaceX at the time, the tables have turned and now it's Boeing that's playing catch up. SpaceX's Crew Dragon capsule has significantly more experience than Boeing's Starliner when it comes to carrying passengers, having conducted eight crewed missions to the ISS, the first of which was back in 2020. The name of Boeing's rival to SpaceX's Crew Dragon capsule is the CST-100 Starliner, short for Crew Space Transportation. It just launched, carrying astronauts Sonny Williams and Butch Wilmore to the ISS as part of its first crewed flight. It launched atop an Atlas V rocket, which is also carrying human beings for the first time. Both SpaceX's Crew Dragon and Boeing Starliner have room for up to seven passengers, launch on top of a rocket, and serve as transportation to and from the International Space Station. The Crew Dragon capsule is typically recovered by sea, while the Boeing Starliner touches down in the desert, a location which Boeing says makes recovery efforts a little easier. These capsules are made to be reusable. SpaceX said it's aiming for its Crew Dragon capsules to be reused up to 15 times, though certain parts of the spacecraft may need to be replaced more frequently. Boeing has said its Starliner can be reused up to 10 times with a six month turnaround to perform any necessary services after each flight. The Starliner is expected to reach the space station about 24 hours after launch, with the crew performing tests along the way. Astronauts Williams and Wilmore will stay aboard the ISS for about a week before hopping back on the Starliner and returning to Earth. If all goes well, NASA will certify the spacecraft for future crewed missions to the ISS. The long-awaited crewed flight of the CST-100 Starliner is the third orbital test flight for the spacecraft and the culmination of what has proven to be a long and difficult journey. The Starliner's first orbital test in 2019 ended in failure as the spacecraft reached space but was unable to reach the ISS. This resulted in a delay of more than two years. The Boeing Starliner's second test flight also suffered delays due to rust caused by the humid Florida climate and a propulsion issue after launch. However, it was still able to dock with the ISS. The crewed test flight itself also faced delays. Originally scheduled to launch in early May, it's been delayed multiple times due to issues with things like the parachute system, a pressure valve, and a propellant leak. In total, these setbacks have resulted in a whopping $1 billion in losses for Boeing. Numerous recent scandals have also dogged the company, including the door plug blowing off of a 737 mid-flight and the subsequent grounding of all 737 MAX 9 planes, two fatal crashes in 2018 and 2019, resulting in the death of more than 300 people, protests over the human cost of some of the company's defense contracts, and the deaths of Boeing whistleblowers Joshua Dean and John Barnett, both of whom had raised concerns with Boeing's handling of safety issues. All this may help explain why Boeing took longer than SpaceX to launch a crewed spacecraft to the ISS. They don't explain why Boeing was paid $2 billion more than SpaceX with so much less oversight. SpaceX was reportedly required to go through a full safety review, while Boeing only underwent a limited review. That might be a topic for another video though. If you've got some thoughts, drop them down in the comments. As always, thanks so much for watching. I'm your host, Jesse Orl. See you next time, what the fam.